All right, folks, on this segment, I'm going to introduce and demonstrate the subcuticular running stitch. Uh, this is a stitch that's frequently used for aesthetic closures, um, which is important uh, on exposed skin wounds such as the face. It can be very useful. Um, it can also be utilized in folks that tend to form keloid scarring, as it will generally have a better aesthetic result. Um, there's different ways to begin the suture and end it. Some people leave an exposed tail. Others bury it deep inside. Um, I personally do it both ways and uh, generally don't have a real strong preference one way or the other. Um, with the exposed tails, you just have to clip those off after there's been uh, uh, several days for healing. Uh, this is generally used in combination with another uh, topical closure technique um, frequently with uh, stereo strips or suture tape. Um, it can also be used with a, a topical uh, skin glue. Uh, so, uh, in, in some instances, it can be used alone. But let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm using a absorbable monofilament suture. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to enter on the right-hand side of the wound, approximately a centimeter from the edge. I'm going to rotate through, and I'm going to come out the subcutaneous layer right at the point of that wound. Okay. I'll rotate that through enough to go ahead and reload our needle. All right. Now, for this initial pass in the wound, you're going to go right at the corner of the wound, keeping it, the needle in the subcutaneous layer. You're going to come out in the same subcutaneous layer. I'll go ahead and reload my needle. And try not to grab my suture as well. Pull that through. Now, be sure not to pull your tail through. Otherwise, you'll have to start over. So frequently what I'll do, so I don't accidentally pull through, is I'll put a hemostat just on the tip to hold it. Okay, so we got that first pass through. We're going to get an idea about what is directly perpendicular. We can use our suture to pull across and get that idea because our suture entering on the proximal side will want to be at the same level of the exit on the far side. Now, sometimes if you're using a reverse cutting needle, uh, that'll cut through the skin and it'll actually leave it more diagonally. So a way you can avoid doing that is start your entry point just behind that perpendicular line. So that's what we'll do now. So we evert that skin edge, enter in the subcutaneous layer, rotate that wrist through, exiting in the subcutaneous layer. Rotate grab that needle and I've grabbed my suture so well, I got tangled somehow let's untangle and then we'll pull tight and as you can see that it's perpendicular and it pulls those wound edges nicely together And then we'll just traverse the entire length of that wound just as we started it. So let's get an idea about our perpendicular. It's right about there. We'll start just behind that. You avert that skin edge. Exit. 
exit a subcutaneous layer. Now that we're getting close to the end of the wound, this will probably be our next to last pass. So we'll get the exit of that needle very close to the point of our wound. Again, exiting in the subcutaneous layer. And for our final we're going to exit, or correction, we're going to enter in that subcutaneous layer. We're going to exit right at the tip of that wound. We're going to tighten it down. And then, for our final pass we're going to go right in the tip so take care not to pass the needle through your suture we're going to go about a centimeter from the wound or corner and come out of the skin and now you can pull on both ends and tighten that wound right up and as you can see it approximates the skin edges perfectly which is what makes that such a, a beautifully aesthetic closure. Now, finishing this off, you can do one of two things. One is you can use uh, steri strips to go ahead and tighten down the wound. Um, you could also put a steri strip over the limbs of your stitch and then fold them over and put another steri strip, and that'll anchor it down. You do that on both sides. The other option you have is to tie it down into a, a knot. Now how you would do that, similar to how you would tie your interrupted sutures, so you make two forward throws around your needle driver. You grab the suture at the tip, or grab the suture at the skin, and you pull through, tighten it down into a knot. And that knot forms right at the skin. And then you can make a reverse, and grab your loop, and just make that knot bigger with four or five throws. If you want to do more, you certainly can. I've done several more. Just to make sure that that knot is stout enough that it won't pull through the skin. So once you have that done on one side, you can clip that tail off by approximately a centimeter to allow for easy removal. And then you can do the very same thing on the near side or your entrance side. And there's your subcutaneous running suture with knotted anchors. Now, once that wound is satisfactorily healed, or either healed enough that you don't need the anchors, you take those out just like you would a simple interrupted stitch. You grab your knot, pull it up, and clip right under the knot at the skin. And if you used a non-absorbable suture, you would clip one end, then you would grab the other, and you just pull that suture straight out as such. 
But again, if you use an absorbable suture, you can just clip both ends and leave the suture internally to dissolve. Uh, if you use a non-absorbable, you clip one end and pull out the other. And that concludes our running subcuticular stitch.